Today is 29th May 2020. We are back again to English language. And the topic of today says the grammatical names and functions of noun phrases and clauses. As we all know, a noun phrase is a group of words with a noun as its headway. And this noun phrase can be pre-modified by one, a possessive. For instance, we have my office. The possessive here is my. It can also be pre-modified by an article. Articles are the a and the am. For instance, we have an example as eh, a horse. Another one is an adjective, which has example as handsome boy. Handsome there is an adjective. Then, we say that a noun clause, a group of words with a finite verb but has a complete sense. In short, it is a subordinate clause. An example of a noun clause is, an example of a clause is when he came yesterday. If you look at this group, you see that it has a, ver a verb, but it has no complete sense. So by a subordinate clause, we mean a clause that depends on the main clause in the sentence to have its complete sense. Meaning that a noun clause still has another clause to depend on so that it will have a complete sense. In common with a noun phrase and a noun clause is that all of them do the work of a noun. They behave like nouns in sentences. Generally, Clauses are introduced by clause markers. Clauses, all the clauses, like adverbial clause, adjectival clause, and other clauses, are introduced by clause markers. Therefore, the clause, clause is that, whether, how, what, whoever, who, when, whatever, however, why, when, it is it. Therefore, noun phrases and clauses have the following functions to perform in sentences. The first one is subject of a verb. This means that a noun phrase or a noun clause can act as the subject of a verb in a sentence. For instance, we have that anyone to have a baby is beyond my understanding. This is a noun clause introduced by the clause marker that. And it is the subject of the verb is. Why? Because it comes immediately before the verb is in this sentence. So the grammatical name here is noun clause. Where the grammatical function is subject of the verb is. Another example says, whether she comes or not is not my concern. Whether she comes or not is not my concern. The subject of this sentence and the noun clause there is whether she comes or not. This is introduced by the clause marker weather and, is the, and comes immediately before the verb is. Therefore, the grammatical name here is now close. And the grammatical function is that it is the subject of the verb is. Another says, short distance running is his favorite race. When you look at this one, you see that there is no clause marker. There is no clause marker. It's not introduced by any clause marker. Therefore, it is a noun phrase. Short distance running is a noun phrase. That is the grammatical name. But the grammatical function is that it is still the subject of the verb is. My father traveled yesterday. My father is a noun phrase. There is no clause marker there. Therefore, it is a noun phrase. That is the subject of the verb travel, traveled. So the grammatical name is noun phrase. The grammatical function is that it is the subject of the verb. Another grammatical function of a noun phrase or a clause is that it can act as the object of a verb. For instance, we have, he likes buying new books. He likes buying new books. If we look at this, this sentence, we see that immediately after likes, you get buying new books. And this buying new books is a phrase that is the object of the verb, likes. Remember, when we talk about subject, we get it before our verb. But our object must come after the verb. So the grammatical name here is noun phrase. Why the grammatical function is that it is the object of the verb likes. Then another example says, My father meant that I should not go to school. 
My father meant that I should not go to school. The verb here is meant. That I should not go to school is a noun clause. It is a noun clause because it starts with the clause marker that. So the grammatical name is noun clause. The grammatical function is that it is the object of the verb meant. Then another one says, can you tell me when to expect you? Can you tell me when to expect you? This is a noun clause also. Introduced by the clause marker when. And it is the object of the verb tell. Now, next one says, I missed going to school. Going to school here is underlined. It is a noun phrase because there is no clause marker. This clause marker guides us. In knowing the difference between a clause and a phrase. Therefore, this is a noun phrase and it is the object of the verb missed. Number three says it can also act as noun in apposition. When we talk about apposition, we talk about lying side by side. We go to your dictionary and look at the word apposition. You see that it means lying side by side. When two uh, expressions are in apposition. Nothing should go between the expression and this apposition unless it is a comma. If anything goes in between the expression and this apposition, it is no more now in apposition. Therefore, when you have now in apposition, the now and this apposition lie side by side. For instance, the news that Ngozi has recovered is welcome. The news that Ngozi has recovered is welcome. Remember that Ngozi has recovered is still the news. The way it is written shows now in apposition. So that Ngozi has recovered is the now in apposition to the news. The grammatical name is now plus grammatical function now in apposition. That is how it is written. The second example says, the president, a man full of respect, traveled yesterday. Two. The next example says, the president, a man full of respect, traveled last week. So the president is still the man that is full of respect. The way it is written is that the president, comma, a man full of respect travel there last week. So a man full of respect is the noun phrase. And the grammatical function is that it is now in apposition. Next one says, the rumor that the chief has been detuned is on air. The rumor, comma, that the chief has been detuned is on air. That the chief has been detuned is now in apposition to the rumor. A senior prefect, a nice girl, went on weekend. A senior prefect, a nice girl, went on weekend. A nice girl is the noun in apposition to a senior prefect. If it is an external examination, sometimes they omit these commas. But the way it is written will still show you that comma should be there. So it should not confuse you. Then the fourth function of a noun phrase or a noun clause is a subject, a subject complement, a subject eh, complement. Remember that a sentence that needs a complement doesn't have a, a, an object. In a sentence that you have a complement, you don't have an object. For instance, his problem is that he wants to fight. His problem is that he wants to fight. One can only say that he wants to fight is his problem. That is one way of knowing a compliment. That he wants to fight is his uh, problem. That is why it is a compliment. You can interchange the subject with his compliment and still get this uh, complete uh, meaning. The meaning will not change. But if it is a, an object, if you interchange it, you see that the meaning of the sentence will change. 
here that he wants to fight is a noun clause because of this clause matter that. And the subject, the grammatical function is that it is subject eh, complement. Another one says, that is what he told me. That is what he told me. That is what he told me. What he told me is a noun clause. Because of what as a clause matter. And the grammatical function is that it's subject eh, complement. Animals are part and parcel of creation. Animals are part and parcel of creation. Part of parcel of creation is a noun phrase and the subject complement to the noun animals. Ngozi was a dirty mess after the accident. Ngozi was a dirty mess after the accident. A dirty mess is a noun phrase and the subject eh, complement. Remember, when we have a complement, we never have a verb verb. If you look at these sentences, you see that the verbs there are auxiliary verbs. This one has things. This one has things. This one has a. This one has words. But when you have an object, you must have a verb verb and action word. But in absence of action word as a verb in a sentence, what you have is a complement, not an object. The fifth one says that a noun phrase or a noun clause can equal the act as object of preposition. As object of preposition. As we know, a preposition is a way that shows the connection between two sides of a sentence or shows you the position of an object in a sentence. We have the book is written for whoever wants it. The book is written for whoever wants it. When you have object of a preposition, unlike the object of a verb, an object of a verb, the, uh, the noun phrase or a noun clause comes immediately after the verb. But in object of a preposition, after the verb, you still have the preposition, and immediately after the preposition, you get the noun clause or the noun phrase. The book is written for whoever wants it. The, it's written is the verb in the sentence. After the verb, you still get the preposition for. Then after the preposition, you have the noun clause, which shows that it is the object of the preposition for, not object of a verb. This one says, he was paid for running the business well. He was paid for running the business well. The verb here is was paid. Then after was paid, you get the preposition for before you get the noun phrase, which is running the business well. Therefore, running the business well is a noun phrase that is the object of the preposition for. Remember, you must name the preposition. Before you get your full mark, you must name the preposition. You don't just say object of a preposition, but you must name the preposition. Next one says, do the job in whichever way you want it. Do the job in whichever way you want. Whichever way you want is the object of the preposition in. Whichever way you want is the object of the preposition in. And it is a noun clause. Why? Because it has the clause matter, whichever. The last example says, the bird flew over the fence. The bird flew over the fence. The noun phrase here is the fence. Over there is a preposition which comes immediately before the fence. And the verb there is flew. So instead of this defense being the object of the verb flew, it is the object of the verb over. So this is a noun phrase and the grammatical function object of the verb over. Then you have an assignment to do. With this assignment, I will just know whether you understood what I taught you or not. I said, give the grammatical names and functions of the following. Number one says, when Christ will come in, when we come is shrouded in victory, uh, in mystery. When Christ will come is shrouded in mystery. So I underlined when Christ will come. So give me the grammatical name and function of this underlined group of words. Number two says, Mr. Ude, the pioneer of our school, died. The pioneer of our school is underlined. Give me the grammatical name and the grammatical function. 
The man will enter into whichever one he sees. The man will enter into whichever one he sees. Whichever one he sees, the underline, he made the grammatical name and the function. The student was expelled. The student here is underlined. So what is the grammatical name and function of this underlined group of words? The teacher taught the students at the field. The teacher taught the students at the field. The students also underlined. So read it very well and give me the grammatical name and function. Make sure you write it very well. And submit. It's very important you submit them. Thank you.